first, what what is your role inside of of, of VMware? What what is the role of the chief scientist? Is that's an interesting question. I mean, um, you know, so I got a little bit of history. I'm I'm actually a professor at Stanford University in the computer science department, and so I founded VMware and took a couple of years off to, and worked there full time in the beginning. Um, but now I am actually uh, back at Stanford at full time, and so as part of Stanford's agree, you know, agreement, my agreement with Stanford, I can consult one day a week, and so I spend my one day a week at VMware. Um, so I'm not sure what the role of a chief scientist is. I'm, what I struggle to try to do is just useful things for the company. You know, I, I, and so I some work with people on advanced development um, projects. I work with people on company strategy or what, what we should be doing. Um, try to use my influence to fix things that look broken <laughs> inside the company to ge general. Right. So at Stanford, what 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 do you do? What sort of the areas? Oh, you um, well, you think the VMware itself was sort of like I was working in virtualization and, and, and uh, the idea, initial ideas for that came out of my research group and since going back to VMware, um, Stanford, I, um, yes. one of the things I've been working on is actually how we can use virtualization to solve some sort of the problems we have in systems, and so I work looking at mobili mobility problem issues. Like for example, the whole virtual appliance stuff that we're working that we're pushing now, or stuff that uh, is ideas that we sort of worked on in a research group. And because the first ideas of of using virtualization was server consolidation, that was sort of the uh, one of the first thing the usage of uh, of you know, it's interesting if you look at the history of VMware, um, you know, obviously there's a long history of virtualization from IBM, IBM mainframes in the 60s and 70s and stuff, but um, we started again in the late 90s. Uh, uh, partly, we saw server consolidation as being like an interesting thing to do, but it would look like it was going to be very difficult to get into the server market right away. So, we actually sold it initially for running two different different OS environments on the same machine. So, our workstation, with you know, even initial marketing collateral said, or run Windows and Linux <laughs> at the same time. So, um, that you know, that was an example of the of you know using it. And then when we got into the server marketplace into the server side um, server um, consolidation was one of the one of the big issues and it, it, it's interesting since so my research at Stanford um, I was got into virtualization because I was part of this project to build a very very large shared memory supercomputer you know it's um, supposed to scale up to 4,000 processors and I was trying to figure out could we make that machine more useful for you know for general public as opposed to supercomputing you know applications and so um, that's where we started playing around with virtualization and thinking you could try to run a whole enterprise on <laughs> on a supercomputer but uh, that's what and, but when we started the company it didn't look like we could go into the enterprise right away and we certainly can't claim we invented virtualization I think IBM would you know in, in the 1960s and invented virtualization um, um, so I do what's get new today. Yeah. What's new today? Well, you know, I think what you know, like, is instructive to see why virtualization fell out of disfavor in the industry, and w one of which was that uh, it was perceived a lot of the value was that you had expensive hardware, and by divvying up expensive hardware, you could then, um, you know, you could it made you know made sense to make a big mainframe look like a bunch of <laughs> virtual computers and. You know, we were able to see that the real value would be in the managing of the of the, so the complex software environments. And, but even though it's the same technology, it's now you know the, the value people get. Yeah, it's yeah we can manage hardware better. That's you know. But I think the you know the true true value that customers get is largely is the fact that they can now get a handle of these really complex software environments better. So successful at server consolidation that people got in their mind said, oh, what, what VMware allows you to do is run you know, like a bunch of underutilized servers on it. And, you know, the, if you saw Diane's keynote, it was like 
our vision is really not running on it. Maybe your server, your virtual machines aren't running at full utilization, but it's what it's using this virtualization layer to actually really efficiently pack your computing needs on your hardware. If you asked me a few years ago, it was I was pretty sure that every server in the future was, would basically be um, virtualized just because it's just so compelling and all the trends push that. And I know Intel's going to come out or AMD is going to come out with these servers that have you know, 16 or 32 cores and it makes, it would, if you had a virtualization layer, you know, it would be impossible to how to use those things. On the desktop is actually sort of interesting of where, you know, we've seen, um, We've, we've seen certainly there's certain cases where you know, like our workstation product for developers is, is probably almost a required tool. So we, we have that we have that, but developers are only a small you know piece of the overall desktop market. Um, we're, we're with our the ACE product we're doing and pushing this the idea of like desktop virtual appliances where you can distribute again use that same virtual appliance distribution mechanism on the, on the desktop. I think there's promise there um, to actually have virtualization on on every desktop as well. It's just sort of, you know, usually things come out on the desktop first and go out to the server. This one's going to probably go the other way around where it becomes standard in the data center and then people will sort of see the, the advantages they get in the data center and try to work it into the desktop. You know, there's some technical challenge, obviously, in the desktop. There's a lot of sort of devices like fancy graphics accelerators and video and sound and stuff like, and people plugging things like that camera in. And what does the vir virtualization layer do? Would you do that? But, but uh, I think it's it's doable. The the idea the idea that we've been painting in, in of the the data center where you know you treat CPU and memory and all your sort of hardware resources as a, as a pool you just sort of add to and then you have the virtualization layer that that you know obviously there's lots of room for improvement in the way we do that and the flexibility we have and I, and I think over the next five years you'll just see that become you know, like the more, more not only accepted in the industry, but you know, like sort of optimized, where you know, a lot of algorithm optimization of how you do the mapping. Um, the whole beyond the data center is sort of in, it really interesting. That you mentioned the desktop and stuff. You know, there are like people we're partnering with that believe that, like desktops just going to go away. Where fundamentally, you know, um, connectivity is being good enough that you would just run your virtual machine on a centralized cluster and use some remote display protocol to, to do it. So that's one vision. If you talk with the people like uh, at uh, Google and Yahoo, they have this other. Sort of web, you know, everything's going to be in the browser, and that's the only application you're going to run on your desktop vision. And, and I don't know which ones, you know, we have these also ones where we're shipping whole virtual machines around. And I, you know, I don't know exactly which ones of those visions are going to run, but uh, when, and maybe some combination of them, you know, where VMware is cer certainly. Um, we aren't really doing the browser-based one, but the the other the other two we have products that we hope are successful in both of those areas. It's going to be a pretty interesting change we see in uh, operating systems. First of all, operating system it's traditionally been this one special piece of software. It comes bundled with the hardware. Everybody sort of uses the same one or accept, you know, accepts it and stuff. And now there's going to be where. Um, you know, it's even to the point the customer chooses the operating system and then the uh, software developers have to develop for that whatever configurations we have. And I think this is going to switch around. And I think you're seeing it already with some announcements in the industry where if I have this big application program, why, why, why should I bend myself out of shape to port to all these different operating system environments when I can just pull in an operating system environment that provides exactly the support to the, my application needs and it's tuned for my application. and, and you you know, you can greatly simplify it since rather than having to support all these different applications and all this different hardware, it's just supporting this one application and hardware management is doing. And I think we're going to see that the operating systems you start getting, you won't even know they're there. They're like this appliance model where I, mean, I have this appliances in my house. I don't know what operating system they're running. I think you're, you know, you see what Oracle is saying. We're going to get in the OS, you know, business, and you know, some of our other partners that haven't announced things. We're 
were basically saying, we're going to ship these virtual appliances. We're not going to even tell people what the operating system. In fact, it's one we wrote ourselves since it fairly suits our application. And I think we're going to see that. And uh, yeah, That's I think the end of the OS that, that, that as yes, we know no, it. I think so. I think that's going to happen.